The story of Lucy and how she came to start Project Rocket is the perfect example of how one person, along with her sister, came to realising her own power in being able to create social change. She went ahead and she just did it. Project Rocket builds spaces for young people to be imaginative and creative and to come together without prejudice or hate. Lucy and her team have reached thousands of Australian kids and is leading the way in anti-bullying campaigning. Please welcome Lucy Thomas. So, about 10 years ago, my sister and I, Rosie, my sister, and I started talking about an idea. It was an idea that we really buzzed on, this idea, and it wasn't a particularly novel idea, but it was powerful. Powerful because it was I suppose, born from a fundamental belief that we both shared as sisters. That's seriously powerful. It was a belief that we were compelled, driven to pursue, and still are. And that idea founded my entire future. So at this point, my sister and I were pretty fresh out of school. But this simple idea carried us forward and started our careers. And this is the idea, a world where respect and kindness thrive over bullying, hate, and prejudice and where all young people are free to realise their potential. At the time, Ro and I weren't particularly motivated by our own personal experiences of like, being bullied, for example. I mean, sure, when I was in school, I did cop some flack, as people do from time to time. But what was more significant to me were the times that I witnessed bullying. I saw it happen, quite extensively, actually. And the feeling that it gave stayed with me. So I want you to try and think of a time when you saw something you really, really bloody disagreed with. Maybe it was a racist joke, or a time when you saw a child or an animal being maltreated, or maybe it was when you saw someone getting picked on for someone else's entertainment. Try to remember that time. And I want you to remember how you felt. Because I think that feeling really does stay with you, and for me, the feeling, it was a feeling of inadequacy and sadness because bullying robs people of this world that we crave. It smothers potential and it operates on every tier of society. It's in our schools, yes, but it's also in our families and our communities and it, it exists on a global scale. So without caution or hesitation, that was it. My little sister and I decided to launch Project Rocket to empower young people to stand up to bullying at school, online and beyond. And we started small, first by heading into schools ourselves and running these really interactive workshops that equip young people with strategies they'd actually be willing to use to stand up, strategies we'd use ourselves. We focused on building empathy and actually just having a whole bunch of fun as well. And it was really hard at first. It was hard convincing people that these issues deserved airtime in school. And it was hard convincing adults, teachers, grown-ups, that we should be the ones to do it as two fresh-eyed girls straight out of school. But the response from young people was immediately and overwhelmingly positive. And over time, we developed a solid model that took a, you know, educated evidence base and translated it into material content that actually was meaningful for students. And so the demand grew. And as the demand grew, the power behind this idea grew. And we started to meet people who wanted to join our team. And then as the team grew, the power behind the idea grew a little bit more. And so we started training people to run Project Rocket workshops. We shared our ideas, we shared our model, and we started sending them into schools. And the model's pretty simple. Project Rocket isn't a big theatre performance. It's not a really dramatic sob fest. It's not a really negative, terrifying lecture. It's about having real, honest and positive conversations about the risks and rewards of standing up to bullying. It's so simple. And what started as these school workshops has now grown into Australia's youth-driven movement against bullying, hate and prejudice. We've reached hundreds of thousands of young people around Australia. It's super cool. So Project Rocket is by far my biggest personal success. When I like, look around at the movement that I'm part of, a movement of beautiful, diverse, incredible teenagers who stand together against bullying, I actually like, I can't believe how lucky I am. I feel like I'm full of disbelief. In fact, I think that disbelief might have been captured in a photo. I'm like... And 10 years on, I've got to be honest, the photo more resembles this guy. It's kind of an uncanny resemblance. Right? 
But seriously, my disbelief about the opportunities we've had, about the kinds of partners we've been able to work with, the kind of campaigns we've been able to run, the change I'm seeing around me, it's absolutely freaking incredible. I can't believe I'm part of this, let alone started it. But really, my greatest learning when it comes to the issue of bullying and the nature of those who bully has come more recently. Because after spending a decade tackling bullying, I finally experienced it firsthand. And to explain, I just want to paint you a little picture. This is a picture that was shared with me by a really smart person, so hopefully I get it right. I want you to imagine a table, and on the table is a feast, like beautiful food. If you're a Potterhead like I am, it might help to imagine like the feast at the Great Hall at Hogwarts laid out. But it's a beautiful array of food. And I want you to imagine that standing in front of the food is a really like starving person. They're malnourished, they haven't eaten, they're on their last legs. And you give them the food. You just say, you can eat it all, you can have whatever you want. I'm going to ask that question again. How do you think they'd feel? Because when I was asked this, at first I thought, oh, they'd be psyched, right? They'd be so happy. They're, they've got food and they're hungry, so they're going to like, eat it and be really happy and like, snuggly and warm and full and relieved because they found their next meal. But when I think about that a little deeper, I actually think this experience would be very confronting for a starving person. You know, they might be suspicious about where the food came from. They might feel angry with the awareness of what they've been deprived before. They might feel confused or anxious. And so they might not want to eat the food for fear that it's been contaminated or poisoned. Or they might binge on it and eat so much of it that they vomit it up because they made themselves sick. Or they might smash up the table out of frustration. And now the point of this picture is that the feast isn't food. I want you to imagine that it's kindness. Because for someone in this world whose experiences are born from an orientation of cruelty, kindness is going to be very hard to tolerate. It's hard to accept. And that's what I learned. I don't have time to share my story, but it's pretty simple. I gave love and kindness to somebody who couldn't accept it, whose family wouldn't accept her, her sexuality. And so I became the target of an extended homophobic campaign of threats and defamation and being taken to court and physically intimidated and terrorised at the hands of this family and the girl who I loved. So now I know what it's like to be bullied. And now more than ever, I'm so grateful that I get to get up and go to work at Project Rocket each morning. In fact, I found a note that I'd written to myself on my computer during all of this horrible stuff. And I think it pretty much sums it up for me. It says, I will start today with gratitude, because no matter how hard things seem, as long as I'm alive, I have hope. And even when it does not feel like the life I'd planned, I will remember that this is the life I chose, and I'll choose to make the most of it. It might sound like it would be really negative talking about bullying all the time, but really it's not. It's, it's about working out who you are, what you stand for, what you're willing to stand up for. It's about exploring human connection our shared fears and our shared motivations. And in that regard, I'm really grateful that I met this girl too. Because with all of her fear and the ignorance in her family and the cruelty in her childhood, she became my greatest teacher, legit. She gave me really valuable learning and Project Rocket gives me a platform that I can use to facilitate that learning for others without having to drop like a hell bomb of hate on their lives. It's pretty cool. And I still really care about her, but I've learned that the greatest way I can show it is by taking action. In fact, that's the only way I can show it. So Project Rocket gave me strength when I needed it the most. I learned that survival is the ultimate act of rebellion against those who bullied you. Survival is the ultimate act of rebellion against those who bullied you. I chose to rebel against the worst hatred I'd ever known just by surviving it and just by still being nice, just being kind. Pretty simple. And so we can all make these decisions, you know, to pursue kindness in the face of cruelty. And that's what I learned. I guess I never would have known then that this negative experience would have led to so many positive ones as a result of choosing kindness. I never would have known that as a result of this, I'd be choosing to speak out loudly about LGBTI issues or that I'd be getting flown to Facebook headquarters in California to learn about how they promote kindness online, walking past like Mark Zuckerberg in the hall being like, what? 
what was that? Crazy. I would never have expected that we'd be developing an online curriculum and an app that's about making kindness go viral, all, all through Project Rocket. It's so cool. And then there's this. This is literally what I live for. It's so cool. I cannot, I still can't believe that this is my job. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is, through, through these experiences, we can create positive change, you know, and I didn't start Project Rocket so that it could be a tool to save me. But the way that I see it is that, I guess I went from being a social entrepreneur to being a social pain entrepreneur, and channeling my pain into something positive really did heal me. I think our task isn't to surround ourselves with really beautiful, shiny things or achievements and people we admire. I think our task is to take the grit of the tough times, the times we were tested, the boringness of everyday life, the horrors of our experience, and to transform it into something that's truly valuable for other people. That's what I think our challenge is. Because you really can't unknow your truth. You can't unsee what you've seen. You can't learn, unlearn what you've learned, even if it's ugly. You can deny it or bury it or wrap it up in lies or hide it. But at the end of the day, when you go to bed at night, it's tucked up with you in bed. It's staring back at you from behind your closed lids. And so given that you can't unknow your truth, I guess you may as well use it to make the world a whole freaking heap better. Thank you.